Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all who have chosen to join Novatore for the final lipstick lunch of this week. Let me shortly introduce Novatore. My co-founder Dagnia Leña and I, Baiba Rubesa, decided to launch an organization dedicated to women's economic empowerment and leadership by connecting, supporting, and driving the like-minded. For more details, I encourage you to dive into our website at www.novatore.eu. Now, one of our initiatives is based on advocacy to enlighten ourselves and decision makers on issues that hinder or drive women's economic empowerment. Today's presentation addresses a topic that can truly impact the bottom line of most businesses. But first, technicalities. The session will last no longer than half an hour. Our speaker will present for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then you have the opportunity to comment or question. These comments can be posted either in the Q&A function at the bottom right of the Zoom screen or on our Facebook page connected to this session. Should we run out of time to respond to all questions, we will follow up on as many as possible on Facebook's Novatore EU site. Later today, a recording of this lipstick lunch will be open to everyone on our Facebook page, Novatore EU, for you to listen to again or share. And I'm very happy to observe that many of you are doing precisely that. And tomorrow you can connect with on our YouTube site. Now, Without further ado, let me introduce today's speaker, Olga Zene. She is a leadership development expert, consultant, presenter, and coach with 20 years experience in the personnel and organizational management areas. She's a researcher and lecturer at RISEBA, where she is working on a PhD dissertation uh, in business management addressing gender diversity on executive boards. Olga has served as board member of the Latvian Coaching Federation, Fontes Executive Search, as well as Latvia's Organizational Psychology Association. Olga, please enlighten us on gender balance, on the impact gender diversity can have on organizations. And I know it is but a simple insight. Thank you very much. Uh, hello there, our participants. And today, we will go with you together and to see how gender diversity on uh, corporate boards can impact organizational performance. And really, last decades, women on boards are in focus uh, as in research, as in uh, many practitioners' activities, uh, politicians, uh, business manager activities, as, and big amount of papers uh, uh, as well, and the uh, scientific uh, interests and publications devoted to exploration uh, and to finding solutions how to increase uh, gender diversity of boards. And my purpose for our today presentation is provide argumentation why we would we have to include women on boards. What kind of positive aspects of organizational performance we can reach? if we are working together in more diverse board regarding to gender. And uh, if we will analyze uh, scientific literature, we can find a lot of aspects of gender diversity impact on organizational performance. Some of them connected with financial performance, with firm risks that as well impact uh, financial performance a lot. Other aspect connected with innovation, corporate governance, and corporate social responsibility. And the financial uh, impact of gender diverse board uh, really uh, has a lot of attention in last decades. And as global consultants, the consultancy analyzed this aspect, as well as scientists is very, very looking for this aspect. And if we will uh, speak about what think uh, global leading consultancy as McKinsey, then consultant is absolutely confident that gender diverse board give positive impact on financial performance. An organization that have more women on boards outperform 
if we speak from financial perspective or every perspective, this organization outperforms the organization that don't have women on boards or don't have so many women on boards. And the greater the representation of women on boards, then higher this likelihood of financial outperformance. And uh, if we speak about uh, uh, scientists and researchers' opinion, yes, they may be not so confident. They analyze different aspects on financial performance, different uh, geographic regions. Uh, some of them see positive impact on financial performance. Some of them don't see impact or even see negative impact. But if we will summarize uh, scientists' opinion as well, we can find very strong and positive evidence that uh, gender diverse board give positive impact on such financial criteria like return on assets, return on equity, and positive impact on long-term financial performance in organization. And as larger uh, organization, as uh, they are more high performance, then larger this uh, impact. Then as consultant, as scientific say, that there is business case for including women on corporate boards, that that give real positive in financial impact. Then next stage, uh, financial and firm risk. And firm risk really is very important in context organizational long-term success and sustainability and financial performance and survival in economic crisis. And, uh, when we observe women on boards, then we can see that this organization demonstrated reducing firm risk. Uh, this organization can better mitigate the firm equity volatility. For example, banks uh, with female CEO provide better lending performance. And uh, especially interesting when scientists was analyzed uh, organization performance during our previous economic crisis, and uh, they analyzing this organization, what was from this sub uh, uh, prime lending segment, then they identified that this organization had almost fully male board. Therefore, I absolutely agree with Christine Lagarde state when she said that if it was Lehman Sisters, it would be a different world. And as well, scientists say the same, and we have as well scientific uh, arguments that men and women have different behavior, especially regarding the ethical sensitive behavior and ethical dilemmas. And as you see, women are more ethically sensitive. Women provide more open, more ethical environment, promotes transparency in financial reportings and earnings. And from other side, men tend to be overconfident and use more aggressive and risky approach in decision making. Mm -hmm. Next aspect, innovation. And the innovation is, is very important for organization long-term performance, effective performance. And the organization that have women on boards demonstrated high ratings in environmental innovation, in innovative products. This organization start to implement green innovation and this organization invest more in the research and development and have more patents. Why? Uh, we have as well explanation from the cognitive perspective when board have more different uh, experience, more different views, more different opinions, then this board have more productive discussion they reduce group thinking and they can provide more creative solution and more creative uh, ideas. And the uh, two last aspects of organizational performance that is well very important, uh, it is corporate governments, governance and we speak as well about control and monitoring board function and as well in strategy creation function then women on board give positive impact on both aspects of corporate governance. And really this organization provide higher uh, corporate uh, governance and uh, more effective approach on this aspect. An organization uh, with diverse board as well demonstrated higher corporate responsibilities. They are more caring about environment they are really voluntary disclose impact of their business 
on the environment, for example, carbon pollution or something like this. They more implement sustainability activities, more oriented to philanthropy, charitable giving, and uh, reputation. And uh, summarizing these arguments, I would like to say that uh, maybe not only financial performance is important for organizational long-term sustainability, but as well other aspects impact organization long-term business, long-term development, and long-term stable and positive impact for on our society. It is from my part all about this argumentation. So thank you very much, um, uh, Olga, for this. It's a very professional insight, I must say. I didn't believe that we could do it this, I, to, to the audience uh, this well in this short of a time. And my absolutely favorite slide is the one on Lehman Sisters. Uh, I must say that from my experience on boards and, and from sort of the long career in extractive industries beyond the company that I worked for, you could see that when women were on boards, they would be uh, uh, more conscious about risks and sort of the scope of risks that need to be addressed, not necessarily just technical or, or financial risk. And very often they were the ones that would raise um, uh, unpopular or, or uncomfortable questions at a, at a table before making a decision. And, and I guess that is what also then creates a 25% uh, bottom line advantage, according to McKinsey. Do you see that as well? Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, really, uh, this additional aspect of uh, uh, women impact, for example, organization with women on, on board is ready to pay more for qualitative audits, really to analyze their performance, to receive this recommendation, to improve all these uh, limits and uh, gaps. And really, women are very caring about very qualitative monitoring and control functions. Yes, mm -hmm. and they uh, bring this uh, positive input for the, to organizational performance as well. Uh, but tell me, if, you know, clearly your research or other research shows that gender diversity on the board level, level increases the overall profitability of, of companies. Why too often is this regarded as a women's issue instead of an overall sort of company performance issue? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that really this uh, aspect uh, need to be more promoted, more presented to society. I think maybe not uh, wide audience uh, know well and a lot about this uh, aspect, but as well, I think the gender bias is uh, regarding the woman leadership capabilities uh, as well quite strong, even if results show something very positive, but bias is from other part impact decisions uh, regarding including uh, women on boards. Mm -hmm. uh, let me remind everybody who's watching, you have the opportunity to comment or ask questions on Zoom in the bottom right hand corner, the Q and A little box to be clicked. Uh, and on the other hand, on the uh, on our Facebook site, please uh, feel free to challenge uh, uh, or dive into Olga's claims. So my, I would have another question. Many companies have inclusiveness, diversity, or equality policies of some kind. Usually they are hidden in sustainability or CSR, uh, or maybe some deep down diversity, uh, HR, sorry, policies. Do you believe such documents are useful? Or on the other hand, you know, in many European countries, uh, diversity has really been legislated on as a requirement, at least at the board level. What do you think about policies on paper? Mm -hmm. I think that policies uh, of paper is good, but not all for success. <laughs> and maybe even if some organization uh, formulated these policies, but they not uh, uh, really go follow up to these policies. Yes, and of course it is only formality. And uh, as you say about legislation and uh, for example, quota on corporate boards that we can see in uh, different European countries that they successfully implemented Yes, and growing up uh, amount of uh, women, really that works. 
Of course, it needs time, but uh, it gives this uh, positive impact of uh, women representation uh, on boards. And po policies, it is only first step to realization. Yeah, that's very true. Um, tell me, you are still deep in the midst of this uh, gender diversity research. Is there a country or a company that you would see as best practice to aspire to? Uh, you think in uh, in Latvia or in anywhere? Generally? Anywhere. Well, well, you know, if you have somebody in the Baltic, please share this uh, with us. Uh, but the the um, uh, but anywhere really. Mm -hmm. I would like uh, to say that one of the example is Accenture and they really care about uh, diversity from different aspects uh, as from gender, from age, yes, from nationality aspects. And I really like that uh, they are very uh, focused work on the diversity improvement uh, aspect and they work on the uh, normalization of equal pay regarding to women and uh, Men, and as well as it, IT company, they are very, very focused uh, work in order to invite more women on this industry as well, on this IT and tech industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a comment from Daiga Auzinha, uh, our speaker of, of yesterday about um, uh, women on, on Baltic boards. She says, I believe policy implementation has to be measured Otherwise, it can stay just on paper. Would you comment on that? Uh, of course, I think that uh, organization that implement diversity measurements is much more effective if they really make some KPI, for example, proportion, yes, of uh, genders on different management levels. And uh, they are really focused and analyzed uh, regularly this uh, uh, equal pay issues and they are going to this KPI, it works better than only policies if we start to measure KPI. Yeah, there's always the you know great management saying of what gets measured gets done. Yes, and, yes. And Therefore, I, I agree good. with measurements. Yes. Uh, yeah. Policies first step like our idea or philosophy, but activity I think really greatly works with KPI measurements. Olga, in uh, other conversations we've had. You have also mentioned women and innovation, uh, and 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 what the uh, how how gender diversity, or at least touched on the topic of how gender diversity affects innovation, and what I find shocking actually is that from the statistics, at least in Latvia, of the last year, that there's a feeling that women are being pushed out of the IT slash innovation. Uh, business area, if you want to call it that. Would you like to perhaps expand a little bit more on women and, and innovation? Uh, I think that if we speak about innovation, that they are really topic about diversity and balanced approach. Uh, then the innovation arises when we have different opinions, then we don't have group thinking, that we don't have equal one right idea. And uh, therefore, if we have women as different uh, representatives of values, of behaviors, of ideas, of experience, then we are really can reach our understanding, we can reach uh, material for our analyzing, we can create creative uh, uh, solution. And really, I would like to say that discussions in diverse boards, not easy, they are longer, they are more hard, but they are leading to the more objective and more high results in decisions. Have you in your, your studies actually uh, encountered companies where you can see that difference uh, over uh, time? In other words, where there has been, uh, there, there have been boards that have been male only women come on board. I mean, diversity is beyond gender, but our topic is, is in this case around gender. And then at some point you see that you see the differences in uh, a company's policy behavior and above all results. Yes, I would like to say when I absorb some organization uh, that have uh, almost fully male board, only one woman, then usually uh, men speaking, analyze and women sitting and listening. 
Yes, and uh, sometimes even when, uh, for example, CEO is asked for opinion, but CEO is asked for opinion for uh, other men, but not only for women opinion. And I think it is as well responsibility of all boards to in include more uh, women in discussion, to ask their opinion, to create this environment, yes, for this equal, uh, equal uh, dialect, yes, and qualitative dialect. And if I, uh, when I observed uh, boards uh, with equal approximately proportion of uh, male and women, really, I understand and see that it is more active discussions, more ideas, yes, uh, more, more, in, more, more dynamic discussions even, I would say, yes, because really different opinion, different views, and if uh, nobody is uh, uh, feeling fear to speak and to give input, I think it is a maximally successful environment for, for good ideas and for objective decisions. Have you seen any boards that are, you know, five women, one man? Uh, no, I don't have such experience. <laughs> I did once. I must have many, many years ago, we were, we were one management board that were all women. And, and for the next position, we desperately were looking for um, uh, a male. That was a very important part to at least have some different opinions at the table. We have different comments coming. I think that the badge this week for uh, one, we have a couple of people who should have most loyal participation of, of three lipstick lunches. One of them sure, certainly is Van de Dauksta, who had started with first a great comment, which is, if policy is not measured, it is just mm, lip service. <laughs> I think we're going to use that somewhere as a, a big quote, Wanda, uh, uh, given to you. She's, she's joining us from the Netherlands. But then she also correctly ask, asks, what evidence is there of women being pushed out of the tech, the tech or innovation sector? That is uh, uh, really my mistake, Wanda. I don't think that they're being pushed out, but the statistics show that the discrepancy for women in salary uh, for that, those sectors has grown to 31% between male, males and females. And which also means that it is much harder to find work in that area uh, and, and to be able to thrive in the area uh, of innovation. I should be, uh, but I, I will raise a little, you know, advertising flag. Uh, in a few of the next lipstick lunches, we will have women who are in these areas or who uh, invest in these areas to talk more about women uh, in innovation. Do you have any comment on that specifically, Olga? Uh, I, I agree with you, Baiba, yes. And uh, if you speak about these uh, differences in uh, salaries and why we cannot observe uh, so many women on this uh, tech and IT sphere that it is as well strongly correlated with uh, uh, biases regarding uh, women intellect as well. And sometimes these biases and these stereotypical views regarding uh, women is that women is not so smart, not so tech, not so mass, not, not about this, but uh, if we will analyze cognitive abilities of women and men, that we have absolutely equal cognitive abilities, absolutely equal. We don't have any differences. Sure. But this stereotyping, and when, for example, uh, girls start to think about future profession, these stereotypes uh, impact as well girls. And do they feel uh, comfortably in the fully male domineering industries? It is as well big questions how it is comfortable for women to, to survive in such obstacles. Many aspects, I think. Okay, now I will, we have uh, uh, Lime Zemele and Marina Briškana, who both have similar but different questions. And this will be one of our last questions. Uh, Lime asks how to change men's mindset about women's engagement value or the value of engaging them. And Marina comments, I believe that because of the lack of IT specialists, exactly the IT sector will be the force which will help women to achieve gender equality. But how far could, can women go? How possible uh, is the situation that when we have gender equality on an expert level and still have inequality in the C-suite level? 
Mm -hmm. Can you respond? Yes, I think it is uh, two different questions, maybe and uh, more fresh for me, this uh, last one. Uh, and this, uh, this similarity or differences on this expert level and C suit level, it is absolutely typical almost for all industries, not only for IT. Then proportion of women are really decreasing if we will go to the top of the company. And it is typical picture for um, almost all companies, not only for IT. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think if we will speak about uh, long term, what we have to care about, that we would have more women on this middle level, then we will have more potential of this uh, higher level. And it means that uh, really this work as with middle level and preparation women of uh, taking more higher responsibility. Uh, I will respond to Lima's question about the male mindset. I said, number one, uh, there is, I think there is even an academic observation somewhere, but I will make it a personal observation that if men have daughters, they usually are more open to looking at women uh, in positions of power and leadership. That's sort of the one thing. Um, secondly, uh, the whole reason why Novatora has been created is to be able to further the issue of women in leadership positions, onboard positions, uh, in a factual and constructive way using dialogue. I mean, we've also had men join us for these discussions as well. So it is up to us also to raise the issue, raise it factually and be able to uh, find and, and um, motivate enough women to go for it and see how we can uh, empower women to do so. One more question to you, Olga. Uh, would you be kind enough to share practical advice for women who wish to be in charge of their professional development? or better their chances at professional success? Mm -hmm. I uh, have one recommendation. This recommendation is to say yes for professional challenges, even if you are not confident, because men usually say yes when they are not confident if they will be able to do this <laughs> or not. <laughs> but uh, yes, try, experiment, take more responsibility you will be able to go forward with this and uh, especially if we will speak about higher level as well it is absolutely possible to be in harmony to combine all your social rules as mother yes as wife as ceo something it is absolutely possible only we have to try to do it <laughs> that's what actually all three speakers this week have, in their own words, said the same thing. Just say yes. Olga, I would like to thank you uh, a lot for uh, making such an interesting presentation. It will be, of course, shared on our Facebook um, site, Novatore EU. And those of you that uh, found value in this half hour, I would ex uh, just invite you to share the link. But before you all go, um, let me... Uh, uh, tell you what is going to happen after this series of lipstick lunches. We have, uh, as of, um, so, sorry, as a, for this March, we will now go into weekly lipstick lunches. This was sort of the uh, start of the Novatore lunch in uh, lipstick lunches in general. Next week on Wednesday, March 17th at 12 o'clock, we will welcome a dynamic and visionary leader from Lithuania. Erin Gaynor. She says of herself that after a 15 year career in the healthcare industry, culminating CEO and board level roles, with the financial independence that she gained, she then concentrated on creating a foundation, the Ella Fund, whose mission is to empower girls and women through education, healthcare, and entrepreneurship. And women and entrepreneurship will be at the heart of her intervention. She is quite a character. I invite you to join us March 17th. But on Tuesday, March the 23rd, lunch will actually move to 1600, so 4 p.m., as we are very honored to have Professor Linda Scott, author of the book, The Double X Economy, that inspired uh, Novatora's creation as our speaker. Uh, she's a globally recognized uh, authority, an expert on women's economic development, 
an emeritus professor, world professor for entrepreneurship and innovation at the University of Oxford. Uh, and we're starting at four o'clock because she will join us from the United States. So for her, it's first thing in the morning. So everybody out there, please continue to follow us on Novatora EU, either on our website or on our Facebook for further updates. To everyone, have a lovely day.